Hi everyone, my name is Josh, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to learn how to pick the right air spray gun. Air spray guns are considered to be the original spray gun and they've been around in one form or another since the late 1800s. Air spray is used in an absolutely massive range of different industries and used for a huge variety of different tasks. So air spray atomizes material by mixing it with an airflow, causing the material particles to break up and create our spray pattern. Most commonly you'll find these sorts of guns in places like car body shops, joinery and furniture workshops, uh, alloy wheel refurbishing companies, general manufacturing and engineering, used for spraying shop fronts and general stuff around the house. We've supplied plenty of setups for real obscure jobs like spraying chocolate on Easter eggs for Fortnum and Mason, spraying the edges of pages of books and even spraying Christmas cake decorations for a company in Poland. Air spray is mainly used for a real fine finish application and differs from an HVLP turbine setup because it works at a higher pressure and therefore breaks up the material particles a little bit more and offers a smoother, better finish. We supply lots of different brands and models of air spray guns, but today we're going to be looking at just the De Vilbis guns. I'm sure you're all aware that there are loads of different manufacturers, variations and models, and unfortunately I can't go through them all as the video would be about five hours long. So the first thing we're gonna do is work out which feed system we'd like for our gun. So by feed system, I mean how we're going to get the material that we're looking at spraying into the gun itself. Nine times out of 10, this is down to personal preference and whatever the sprayer wants to use, but sometimes the product we're spraying determines what system we need. Okay, so let's run through the different options we have and I'll show you what I mean. So we have three main options, first of which is gravity, which is this gun here, and that means we have the cup on top of the gun and the material flows down into the gun. Next up we've got suction, which is this one here, which is where the pot is hanging underneath the front of the gun and works by the high flow of air passing over the top of the cup and drawing the material out with the uh, venturi effect. And last up we have pressure feed, which is this gun here. So this is the only gun out of three that will have a second hose going to it. So with gravity and suction, we just have an airline going to it. That's all we need to get a spraying. But with pressure feed, we need a second hose which attaches onto the front of the gun here which is going to supply our material. The material for our pressure feed gun is normally supplied by either a pressure pot like this one we have here, or by a separate supply pump which we have positioned nearby. Now, the observant among you may have noticed that I said there were three main gun supply types, so suction, gravity, and pressure, and there is in fact a fourth gun here. So that wasn't just a miscalculation on my part, it's just that I don't consider this gun to be a main feed type, but it's always handy to know it's available. So what is this gun? So this is called the Gravity Pressure Assist Gun. It's pretty simple and it's basically exactly the same gun as the Gravity Fed Gun, but you may notice we've got an extra air hose here which is going to the top of the pot. The purpose of this hose is to add a bit of air pressure on top of the product we're spraying to help force it through so it allows us to spray slightly thicker materials. We also have a little non-return valve here on the top which stops any material backtracking down into our air portings. Now we know about the different types available, let's see what we'd use each of them for. So gravity and suction are pretty similar and to be honest, if I'm gonna be choosing a gun, I'm going to use gravity as much as possible. You'll get a better flow rate of material through the gravity gun because you literally have gravity on your side. I also find that the gun is more balanced and less likely to hit whatever you're spraying because the cup is nicely positioned over the back of the gun rather than hanging out front. The only real upside to suction over gravity is the cup is slightly bigger so you're going to need to fill it up less. So with a gravity gun you get a 600ml cup and with a suction it's a litre. But even with that being said, I think I'd rather fill up more often and be more comfortable and have better control over the gun. Next up, we've got this pressure feed gun. So this does have quite a few advantages and disadvantages compared to the gravity and suction gun, as it's aimed at a slightly different kind of work. So with pressure, like I said, we need a supply source. So normally a pressure pot or a pump. This is better suited to work where you've got high volume so you can spray all day without having to refill your gun and where you're only going to be using one colour because you can't swap out colours anywhere near as fast as you can with a cup gun. Another advantage to pressure is you can spray any direction you like. So if your job involves spraying upside down, side to side, awkward areas, this could well be the way to go for you. Also, you've got a bit more control with the pressure feed because you can pick the pressure the material is supplied to your gun at. So you'll have a bit more capability to spray slightly thicker materials because you'll be forcing it to the gun rather than just relying on the gravity feed or the venturi effect with the suction gun. So there's loads of different options when you're using a pressure pot or a pump supply system. So with the pressure pot systems, you're usually ranging somewhere between 10 and 60 litre capacity. Um, we've got this little pot here which is called the KB2 pot. That has a capacity of 2.3 litres and that's used with the pressure fed gun with relatively short hoses, so somewhere between 1 and 1.3 metres. So we hold the gun in one hand and the pot in the other and can spray away on site. 
So it's really handy if you're going to be finding you're going to be filling your cup gun up all the time. So it gives you a little bit more capacity and a little bit more flexibility when you're spraying on site. Lastly, the gravity pressure assist gun. Think of this exactly like the gravity gun, but for slightly thicker materials. So because we've got this extra airline at the back here, pushing down on our material, we can spray at slightly higher viscosity. You normally find this gun in joinery and furniture workshops where they're spraying some thick, gloopy wood coatings. Right, so that's the different feed systems explained. So now we've got to pick the model of gun that's right for us. So with the magic of YouTube, let's switch these guns over. So here we have the most popular Devilbis guns we supply, all in gravity fed form. Not all of these guns are available in gravity suction and pressure fed, so keep an eye out for that when you're selecting. So for example, this little SRI gun here is only available in gravity fed. You also have a choice of air caps, which is this part that screws onto the front of the gun here. The purpose of the air cap is to give us our fan pattern, and it does that by using air ports to deflect the material into our desired shape. There are three main types of air cap available that offer different kinds of efficiencies to suit the sprayer's personal preferences. So first up we have conventional, which is our standard baseline for a spray gun. So conventional air cap guns will operate somewhere between 30 and 60 PSI and normally transfer around 40% of our material onto what we're actually spraying. So that means we're actually wasting 60% in overspray. 60% sounds like a lot and you might think who on earth is going to pick that gun? But it does have a place. So the reason we're wasting so much is because we're using a lot of air at high pressure to atomize our paint. But what this does mean is that we're breaking up our material into smaller particles, which ultimately gives us a smoother, flatter finish. So if you put finish above all else on your priorities, conventional is the way to go. Next up, we have HVLP air caps, which isn't the same thing as HVLP turbine system. That's a different way of spraying altogether. HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. And to be honest, I'm not a massive fan of these air caps. They became popular in the late 90s and it was developed to try and reduce emissions from spray applications. To be considered HVLP, the atomizing pressure at the front of the gun must be less than 10 psi. So that's our LP, low pressure. The HV, high volume, is referring to the higher volume of air required because we're using a lower pressure. So this means we can still break up our material into particles. With HVLP air caps, you'll get less material wastage and less overspray. But because we have very little pressure to break up our material, we're going to have a bigger particle size, which won't lay down as flat and will ultimately give us a poorer finish, which is why I'm not a massive fan. The last type of air cap we have to choose from is Transtech, or otherwise known as Compliant, as it's compliant with the current test standard. So this standard says that we must have a transfer efficiency of no less than 65%, so only wasting 35% of our material in overspray. Transtech is a cross between conventional and HVLP and gives us a great finish, but not while wasting all of our material and creating a foggy overspray. The air pressure to run a gun with a Transtech air cap is typically between 20 and 45 PSI, depending on your setup, the individual sprayer's preferences and the material you're spraying. And this style of gun is the most widely adopted air spray system to replace HVLP and conventional. Okay, so that's the air caps cleared up. Let's run through the different gun models and explain what type of job they're used for and what kind of customer they're aimed at. So we'll start off with this FLG gun. So this is available in gravity suction and pressure fed and is the cheapest gun we have here today. So this is a fantastic entry level gun and is pretty simple and basic, but it can also be used for a huge variety of different jobs. The main downside with the FLG is being an entry level gun, it has very limited availability on spare parts should you damage it. So you can get the basic stuff like a basic seal kit, replacement needles, nozzles, air caps, stuff like that, but you can't buy a complete body replacement if you wanted to, say if you'd stripped a thread in the back or something. The needle nozzle setup sizes are also fairly limited. So when buying a new gun, you have the choice of a 1.4 mil in pressure and gravity fed and a 1.8 mil in gravity and suction. You also have the choice of two different air caps so there isn't a whole lot of choice when it comes to that. But to be fair for a gun of this quality at that price point I don't think you can go far wrong and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Next up we have this little SRI Pro Light gun which is personally one of my favorite guns and looks awesome in this gold anodized color. And as I mentioned before, it's only available in gravity fed and uses this little 125 mil pot, which is perfect for really small jobs and massively popular in the car touch up world. The SRI is a high end professional gun with full availability on spares, repair kits and accessories, things like that. You also have a choice between five needle nozzle setup sizes. So that's from 0.6 to 1.4 mil. And you can also choose between two Transtech air caps and one HVLP air cap. Next up, we have the PRI Pro Light, which is also only available in gravity fed, but comes with a larger 600 mil gravity cup. It's meant to be used for primer, hence the PRI for primer. This is also a professional gun that has all the spares and repair kits available. You can choose between five needle nozzle sizes ranging from 1.4 to 2.5 mil, so it can cope with some seriously thick materials. You don't have a choice with air caps on this one, it just comes with a all-rounder trans tech air cap. Now we have these two professional guns which are both advanced HDs. 
They're amazing all-rounders and they're available in gravity suction or pressure fed and have a huge choice of 12 needle nozzle sizes ranging from 0.5 all the way up to 2.8 mil. And they're two guns in two different colors because the orange anodized gun comes with either a Transtec or HPLP air cap and the silvery blue gun is conventional only. With the orange gun you can choose from eight Transtec air caps and three HPLP air caps and with the silvery blue gun you have the choice of six conventional air caps. So we've got massive versatility with the advanced HD range and you can pretty much throw whatever you want at it. Lastly we have the GTI Pro Light range which is again a professional gun with all the spares available. It comes with a choice of gravity, suction or pressure fed and also comes in this awesome gold anodized color. So this is a new generation of gun that comes with a choice of four Transtec air caps and one HVLP air cap and is also available in eight needle nozzle sizes ranging from 0.85 mil all the way up to two mil. The GTI Pro Light has been designed to suit all types of industrial spray finishing and with high flow air portings to give a nice consistent airflow through the gun. So that's all the gun summed up. There is a lot more detail that I could go into on them, but this video would be never ending. Not all the air caps are available with every needle nozzle size. So if you can't find the combination you're looking for, that's probably why. This is because we need to get the balance of air and fluid right so that we don't have loads of material coming out and not enough air to atomize it. For example, if we add a little HPLP air cap on a 2.5 mil nozzle on this PRI gun, it doesn't stand a chance of giving us a good finish. I'll put a link in the description below to an air cap selection guide where you can read up about all the different air caps available for your chosen gun and pick the right one for you. On that guide, there's also a graph which shows you how much air your air cap will be using at any given pressure. This will help you spec the right compressor. Remember, with compressors, it's the air volume that the compressor can supply that's important and not the tank size. So air volume is measured in CFM, which is cubic feet per minute, and we're looking at the FAD number, which is free air delivery, and this will tell us if the compressor can keep up with our gun. So if our gun air cap uses 10 CFM and our compressor supplies 17 CFM of free air delivery, we know that that's gonna be okay. Bear in mind that when we're spraying, we aren't just holding the gun trigger wide open. We're triggering the gun on and off, which gives the compressor a chance to catch up. A larger tank size means that the compressor will be able to go slightly longer between kicking in, and if the compressor is slightly under spec, you're not gonna notice it as much. Also, make sure you have a water trap and drain your tank on the compressor regularly to make sure that the water doesn't go from the tank, down the hose, through the gun, and ruin our nice paint finish. If you've bought a gun and would like to change the job it's used for, you can change the needle nozzle size and the air cap providing they're compatible with each other. If you aren't sure and want to talk options or about anything we've spoken about in this video, just give us a call on the number shown on the screen here and we can talk you through it. If you aren't sure what needle nozzle size you need, just take a look at the technical data sheet for the product you want to spray, like this one here. And providing the manufacturers joined us in the 21st century and accepted that spraying can be used as well as brushes and rollers, they should give you an indication on what size is needed. This will normally be shown under the application section and you'll normally see something like suitable for brush, roller and spray. Then under air spray or conventional spray, they should give you a size or at least a range of sizes providing they've done the tests. Well, I hope this video has been useful and I'll put links in the description below to all of the guns we've spoken about. So if you wanted to find out a bit more, you can check them out there. If you've liked the video and found it helpful, then please hit the thumbs up icon and if you wanted to find out more and get access to exclusive offers then please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get a little notification when we upload a new video that way you aren't going to miss out on any exclusive offers or content thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one